Hi, welcome again to day three of Hyper Annotations. We're here with Leonardo de la Noche, who is an art historian and part of the team at Digital Earth, a fellowship program. Could you tell us a little bit about Digital Earth? What Digital Earth is about. Please, yes. because it's so interesting and I'd like to hear it from you. And it's all like distributed, etc. Yeah, it's kind of hard to grasp it in a way. So, well, hi everyone, of course, who is uh, listening to us. So I, I'm part of the team of Digital uh, Earth together with Arthur Steiner, René uh, Raukens. And Digital Earth is um, sort of distributed fellowship for artists and designers uh, coming from Asia and Africa and working on this location around the materiality and the materiality of the digital reality. So we work with them for six months and then the longest cycle is like one year in which we then showcase the research and projects with our partner institutions around the world. And the New Center is a partner institution of ours in the cyberspace, which is a different location. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And what are you doing here in Venice? Yeah, here in Venice, we, uh, well, we actually came to, uh, to, so the, to see the show, which, uh, so, and to meet people like, uh, like everyone interfacing. else. Interfacing. Interfacing and see, uh, see what's going on. No, we always come to, to Venice for um, almost all the Biennale, so every, every year. And um, yeah, we have also, Fellows of ours are uh, exhibiting at different uh, uh, sort of collateral exhibitions and events. So it was a nice uh, chance to meet uh, people in real life since this, uh, this pro project happens mostly in the cyberspace. So, you know, to meet in flesh and blood everyone yeah. who is involved. That's really interesting. Yeah. I guess that's sort of the, for many people, that's what they come to do with Biennale is artists and curators who don't necessarily know each other, collectors come to meet other collectors and gallerists and so forth, and then we finally get an opportunity to meet in the flesh. Could you tell us a little bit about the project that you did in India just now, a symposium? Yeah, so, so basically for the Digital Earth, now we're in a sort of showcasing moment. Um, it's very research-based, uh, the fellowship. So we have the, the research to be exhibited both in terms of like events and performances in more discursive ways, as well as you know videos and other works that have been some research has been already wrapped up and is already into a consistent artwork, for instance. So we are showcasing that. And we have been to, um, to Beirut. So we did a symposium together with Ashkal Alwan, uh, organized the Digital Earth Symposium. So we had two days uh, with, uh, well, people from the region. So like scholars and artists from the region, as well um, as more international uh, names and our fellows, of course. So that was a really nice gathering moment. And, uh, and then in India, yeah, at Koshi Workshop, uh, where we had like, um, we had a symposium about aesthetic warfare, so we, wow. which relates also to topics that I know uh, the new center is interested in, like memes and mythopoiesis and, and, and similar. So with um, Nishant Shah, Mohammed Salemio, and Heba Amin, and etc., and our fellows Valia, Fetis of Sepide, etc. So yeah, no, it has been uh, it, it has been great actually. Sounds really fun. Will the will Digital Earth ever do something with Venice Biennale? You think? Ah, yeah. Well, that would I don't be amazing. Know. If Venice Biennale. If you are hearing this message, we want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, maybe in the future. Of course, like we are relating uh, to topics um, that, in a way, are still perceived, I think, partially uh, as niche and mm. often, especially mm. in, in the art world, these technologies and infrastructure discourse. Although it's getting traction uh, mm. because of like many institutions. Um, but so maybe, who knows, maybe in, in the future this will be perceived as more main, mainstream and uh, catering to a wider art audience. And What are some of the challenges and advantages of working decentralized, deregulated across the globe with everyone? Yeah, yeah. What? So I guess that the buzzword here is uh, flexibility, ah. <laughs> which is both good and, 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 uh, and challenging uh, in the sense that, of course, uh, it's we, we are a very um, flexible team and so we don't fly to all locations. Uh, um, and together, so we, do, we divide tasks, etc. And this, this allows you to have a, a really big reach in terms of people and artists and designers that you involve with uh, in, the, in the project. And especially we work with the cultural infrastructure that is already in place. So we, we don't come there and build everything from scratch, but we work with, with partners and that has been working um, great. I think that the, the online side is, is a very much um, the fact that people are not present in person, it, it is a challenge. Like oh, each, uh, each fellow works with uh, two mentors, uh, one more on the practice side, one more on the, on the theory side, and you know, Skype, Google Hangouts. So we jump in in this kind of like cloud platforms infrastructure that is freely available. Uh, at the moment, we, we don't have the power to create our own infrastructure uh, yet, but um, 
so that so that that works very well because you can kind of connect you know like african philosophers to chinese fellows other way around so it, very nice connections but then of course the um, the physical presence is very very important so we we might want to do things uh, like uh, differently in, in the future for the second or, or third edition, like gathering everyone at the beginning. So, you, you, you know, you have these community building moments. So, yeah, that's, I think this is a kind of, uh, the distribution is challenging at the very end of the day, the management of that. Sounds exciting. Yeah, yeah. What are you most looking forward to see at, at uh, the Venice Biennale this, this time? Or what have been? Yeah, I was, I was looking forward to see uh, very much the, the main exhibition and see where like the trend, uh, the trend was going. And, uh, I think it's an interesting turn. It feels a bit more, maybe, uh, traditional in the sense, in in a sense, the way it is displayed, etc. But there is quality in, in it. Is uh, I think exhibited and very interesting pieces. I haven't seen many of the pavilions because, as most people, I queued for half of the time to get into the French one. So like, that's yeah, that that was quite, quite crazy. But of course, good quality, and it's not. I'm not saying it just because I wait an hour and a half. Then I have to say it's the best pavilion of all. But I think it's a really interesting artwork and installation by uh, Laura Provost there. And I also pretty much enjoy the Arsenali and um, and the Ganyan pavilion. Which uh, one? The Ganyan pavilion, I which is a, is the first I time uh, I heard they participate, uh -huh. and I think very interesting um, mix of. Um, of artworks. I mean, they're all very known, uh, very well-known artists. But yeah, I very much enjoyed that one. Sounds great. What are your plans for the rest of the, your time here? Yeah, the rest of, of my time is about uh, four hours now, five hours. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, that much of a big plan. We are also we are gonna go to the uh, VAC Foundation. Very there is, good show. Yeah, very that's we've heard, and uh, Valia Fett is all, one of our fellows okay. is is exhibiting there. So okay. we are we're going around with him. And uh, yeah, then try to see some some other pavilions. I actually I also enjoyed the the Japanese one, the Cosmo X one, oh. because we have been obsessing a bit about cosmology in the Digital Earth project, you know, and Cosmotechnics, yeah. uh, you know, Yukoi, yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. So I saw Cosmo X kind of like lured yeah. me in, and it's very po poetic the way it is approached, but it's uh, yet interesting, you know, like kind of understanding oh. these uh, these bottom sea uh, rocks that are lifted up by the tsunami as sort of this wow. kind of like beginning of some kind of cosmology like creation myth although it's destruction and it's uh, related to disaster and trauma that is part of Japanese culture in different ways so it, that's fantastic yeah, thanks for the nice. tip Leonardo uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for everyone who's for listening, everyone yeah. who's listening to the new center thank you okay.